Here's the LC500. It is the single best looking vehicle on the road in my opinion. It just screams luxury, sportiness, uh, expert design, and it looks like a spaceship. Who wouldn't want to drive a spaceship? These lights up front, <clears throat> there's nothing quite like it. So it has a triple beam LED headlight. Um, and then you have this crazy array of repeating L's in here. So the detail is just exquisite. And then you see like this little triangular boomerang design that <clears throat> surrounds the light fixture. It's just stunning. Of course we have the spindle grill up in the front. It's, it's one of the simplest spindle grills. I mean, if you look at the, the GX here, there's more going on, but simplicity guys, simplicity is the goal with just about anything. Simplicity wins out every time. So if you, I don't, it's hard to tell from the camera guys, but it doesn't really look like there's much of a change from the hood line to the, like the, the glass. It kind of just smoothly rolls onto the glass. Whereas you can see the RC behind it, you know, there's a very noticeable poop, you know, for the cabin. But in the LC, it's just, it just is like a cloth that just, uh, you know, conforms to the wind or like a flag blowing into the wind. It's that smooth looking. These wheels are actually the standard wheels on this car. Um, let's, let's get down and look at them. These are 20s, but I'm gonna post a picture of the 21s that you can get on this car that look fantastic. These, are, these look good, don't get me wrong, but once you've seen the better wheel choice, you would never, you think this would look, this is like a tarnishment on this car. It's, it's hard to explain, but I'll put the, the, um, the picture of the nicer wheels. This massive brake caliper, I'm, I'm guessing it's, it's six piston caliper. Uh, it is just huge. It takes up about a third of the wheel and it looks really good. Now, surprisingly, these wheels aren't slotted, but it's still gonna stop more than adequate for 99.9% .9 of you. So let's go, let's look at the mirror design. Again, this kind of looks similar to the headlight display um, in terms of the design around the headlight, so they just continue that. And then with this chrome accent, they also have it up top, right here, that goes all the way back. Um, and that's supposed to represent a samurai sword, and it kind of looks like it. You can see the base of the sword over here, and the tip of the sword would be there. If you guys want to look at the window sticker, here you go. This car, even though it has a V8 with 471 horsepower, it still gets 26 miles per gallon on the highway. And the big reason for that is it's 10 speed span, uh, transmission. Um, so you get excellent fuel economy. Um, I don't know if you guys can see the paint. This paint is called caviar. It's one of the best looking paints we have because it's at night, sometimes it just looks like it's a black paint, but in the sunlight, it looks like a starry sky. It's gorgeous. This particular car has the sunroof. And what it does is it transforms the entire roof to glass. Okay, you guys can kind of see that the sunroof is open from the inside and we'll get in there in a little bit. Um, but it's kind of interesting because this, this roof on a lot of models is carbon fiber. Um, and instead of, you know, when they do the sunroof, instead of just half of it maybe being glass, the other half being carbon fiber, they just took out the whole thing and the whole thing is just glass. So looking at the haunches here, the rear fender, the, the rear wheels stick out quite a bit. You guys can probably see that from the video. It looks really good. Um, so it's a nice wide wheel, wide wheel setup in the back. And let's, uh, so you can see the rear brake light. It's that white light line of, uh, right there at the edge of the roof. And it, it's just, doesn't even look like it's there unless the light is on. So they tuck that away really well. And as we get down below here, so this is an interesting feature in this particular model. This is the additional carbon, it's real carbon fiber, uh, rear spoiler lip. And let's, let's just look at how much that option cost. Uh, carbon fiber rear lip spoiler, 1200 bucks. So in other versions of this car, you can get it with the sporting package, which has an adjustable uh, electric uh, rear spoiler that pops up at, at speed. So this looks good. 
Um, but it would, you know how much better it would look if it had matching uh, carbon fiber roof as well. But we'll take it, we'll take it. Here's the, the beautiful tail lights. Now the tail lights have a very similar design with the headlights in terms of all these like L shapes going on. Um, but it looks like a mirror and what it does is when the tail lights are on, it will reflect back and forth so it looks like the lights are 3D. And I'll, I'll post a picture of that, don't worry. So here's what the car looks like when the lights are on. I have the flashes on as well, so you can see what the blinkers would look like as well. Everything's LED, the, the blinkers right here are really, really bright, so people are gonna be able to see you turn. You can see that the LEDs also, the turning LEDs are also on the mirrors here. So it looks super sharp, uh, it looks really good. But here's a triple beam LED headlights. We'll try to get it from a few angles. And here's the check mark slash Nike swoosh. That kind of, and you can, I didn't notice this before, but it, it runs into the headlight assembly. So it's kind of a, a transition from daytime to nighttime. Uh, and it looks really good. The brights are on right now, so the, the lights are on full force. It looks really good. And we'll get in the back just so you can see those repeating tail lights. But here's the blinker, so people can see you turning. And it, good, it does a good job of wrapping around the side. So here's the side profile, and so you can notice someone, someone is turning from the side. And here we go, here's the back. You can see how bright that turning signal is, which is fantastic. And I believe down here, guys, that's where your reverse lights are gonna be. But here is the 3D tail light. It's like a repeating mirror. Of course, you have another brake light here on the side, which is good for people to see you on the side of the vehicle that they know you're braking. But that repeating tail light, you know, it kind of reminds me of like Tron or something from the 80s with, you know, your, synth music, uh, your neon colors, but it, or something from like, I don't know, Stranger Things. You guys watch Stranger Things on Netflix, they have that like retro opening um, from the 80s and it, this, this taillight is just stunning. Has infinite detail because it has a mirror, right? Mirrors continually repeat, so the lights just fade off into infinity. This is actually how you open the trunk. And then there's the camera right above the Lexus symbol. Open the trunk. There's a lot of mats in here, so nothing really to see. So I'll just go ahead and close that. There's a beautiful logo, LC500. Let's look at the exhaust tips here. Now it has a quad pipe, pipe design. So if we get close here, this top one is just for design only. There's nothing really going on there. You have a rear reflector here. If you look inside, you can see there's two pipes. There's gonna be, of course, an additional two pipes. And you can see the rear diffuser on the bottom. And then this right here, I think that would be a, a reverse light as well. Um, so that's where that would be. And we'll just finish around. And I don't know if it's just this paint, but you can kind of see like this rainbow effect going on. I don't know if it has something to do with the windows, um, but it looks really cool. You get this crazy psychedelic rainbow effect on the paint. Finally guys, Lexus did a good job with the interior of the engine compartment or the engine bay. Uh, it's, been, it's been a while since they've done a good job. I mean, usually it's pretty clean and decluttered, but the design is always lacking, in my opinion. Now with this LC, it looks fantastic. You have, I mean, it's not carbon fiber, but you have the L design. Well, you know, it might be, or at least a knockoff carbon fiber, because you can see the stitching there. So this piece might be carbon fiber or some, some knockoff that looks pretty good. And then back here, it's, it's a different material or not. It just, the, the light is hitting it differently, so it looks like a different material, right? This looks different than that, but it's just how the light is hitting it. Um, so it looks really good. There's a lot of detail. Um, and then you have like these Batman fins that go up the motor. Um, again, this is that five liter V8. This Lexus symbol looks really good. And you know, I wouldn't be surprised if this would be like the same emblem they put on the back of a, an NX or something like that. Um, this is a naturally aspirated motor. This is the, um, where the air comes in. But you see these huge things on top of the shocks. That is the electric, electronically uh, dampened uh, front suspension. 
um, but it looks really good in here guys and it lets you know that this car means business and it's a premium product of course it's staying up by shocks i think all of our lexus vehicles stay up by shocks except maybe like the ct or something but it looks really good let's get inside okay let's talk about the handles real quick that's how you do it we'll open it get inside now <clears throat> I'll just give you guys a quick pan around and then we'll start dissecting everything in the vehicle. Unfortunately, I will not be taking this out for a test drive, um, but maybe one day, maybe one day guys. Sub subscribe and maybe one day I'll take one of these out for a test drive so you can hear the V8 and get my driving impressions. So you have this nice, uh, I believe the word is Alcantara. It's a super suede and it feels really good um, and it's just uh, it feels like a very premium material. These handles are the same handles you find in the LS 500. And I've seen them in another vehicle as well. Um, oh, I think they're going to be actually in the brand new ES, the 2019 ES coming out. Um, but these handles, they're kind of like, I don't know, the new, the new handle Lexus is going to. And it, they look sharp. They remind me of like a, a bull horn or something. Okay, so we have this suede here, this nice little aluminum colored trim, hard materials here, and then as we go down, this already turns to leather. And so it kind of kind of transitions the door straight into the dash um, where it's surrounded by more leather. Uh, the stitching here though is black and you can see the stitching here is white. Um, this does have a heads up display and I'll be able to show you that guys, uh, even though I'm not driving the car, I'll be able to show you that in a second. Memory seats just on this side. And then here are your window functions. And it does have the auto folding window, uh, sorry, auto folding mirrors. Um, and that's what the mirror looks like. It's a large, um, it's much better. Like I did a video on a Porsche uh, Cayenne and the mirrors were like a joke. Um, you can see uh, that the mirrors look very sharp in here and they're big enough and stylish enough to not really stick out on this car um, and still give you good visibility. Up here is gonna be your traction control. Um, you press it to turn it off and you press it again to turn it on. I found that out on the LS 500. So it just says off. It should say off slash on, but uh, that's neither here nor there. Uh, so that's where the heads up display is gonna come from. And then here's where your driving modes are now on the new Lexus vehicles. I call this like the antler system. Um, it just reminds me of like little antlers starting on a young buck, um, which is also one of my favorite rappers, young buck. So if I were to twist this up and go to sport mode, let's, let's focus or switch it up again and go to sport plus mode. Um, but you guys are probably, and you press it down again to get back to normal mode. Um, here are your windshield wipers. Now it doesn't stay up. So you would have to keep pressing it up if you want faster, and that's fine. Um, oh, sorry, was I going the wrong way? Yes, guys, it stays down. I had a, I, it's early. It is, uh, you guys tell me, is that 740? Yes. Um, so it stays down, of course, like normal windshield wipers. But this is a new fob that I don't, haven't really seen on any other Lexus uh, quite yet. And then there's the light fob as well. So let's look at the steering wheel. Um, you have your menu button here, uh, phone button, voice command, this would control everything on the menu. Speaking of which, uh, we're going to go ahead, we're going to double tap this. Key not detected. Oh man, someone has a key. Okay guys, so never mind, we're not going to really, um, we're not going to be able to get into the menus or anything like that. Just kidding guys, I did find the keys eventually, and that's what the fob looks like. It looks pretty sharp. It has a good weight to it. It's definitely high quality materials. Nice little Lexus emblem here at the bottom. And it looks like, uh, that's about it. That's about it. So that means that we're going to turn on the electronics here. Steering wheel's adjusting. Electronic tachometer, naturally. It's pretty cool. Pretty cool startup screen. We are in accessory mode. <clears throat> As you can see, the navigation is on. The clock is illuminated. Uh, we can play a little bit with the screen here. Menu. And then we're gonna use, again, this touchpad to go around and select some things. But navigation radio, 
course your media, which is giving your Bluetooth. So this is unique for um, a Lexus vehicle that I've been in. So what's going on is when you highlight it, when you highlight the thing, it's giving you options. Okay, so it says Bluetooth is available, USB, there's nothing plugged in, there's no disc, and there's no auxiliary. If there was something plugged into each of those, it would come as come up as selectable. So that's the first time I've seen that in a Lexus vehicle. And you can see there's this cool little animation when I when I go from media to phone and etc. It there's just like these little dots that are gonna move and flow around. It's pretty neat. So when I touch the pad, those dots raise up, and then when I move it and let go, the dots raise down. So pretty cool little feature there. Um, climate control. Let's click on it. You have your front seating options. Let's go all the way over. Okay, front seating options, uh, concierge, let's click that. Uh, I'm not gonna get too much into it, guys, but you get an idea. Most of it is down here on the touchpad, um, and you can even control your heated steering wheel from there. And from the looks of it, that's the only way to control your heated steering wheel is through this menu, which would be extraordinarily frustrating in my opinion. But I think they're doing it just to kind of clean up the cabin. Um, because the vast majority of the time, you're not gonna have your steering wheel heated. So you probably, you know, heat up your steering wheel before you even take off um, on a cold morning. Uh, but you can, uh, you know, select your seat temperatures as well. And that's about it. Also guys, here is the, the buttons here. Now that this LCD is lit up, this is all LCD, which is cool because when the car's off, none of these things come up. So it's all LCD. You can control your fan. And this is a double control here. So down is down, up is gonna increase the fan speed. So you guys can probably hear. Okay, this is also double control. We're just gonna put it on auto. Um, and then again, this is double control as well. So press up for up and down for down. This is gonna turn it off. Um, auto as well. So it looks like you have two, two autos here. I think this is, this is gonna be more for temperature. This is gonna be more for, um, it's gonna control where it's pulling the air from, obviously. Your front defroster, as well as your rear and mirror defroster. Okay, so I was able to turn the center cluster on and you can see fuel low. Um, giving you some options and just like the LFA it's going to have a sliding uh, menu here as well as the circle around the speedometer um, so let's let's play with the menu options there you go see it's slid around um, and it's not giving me any options there we go that's what I wanted so we're gonna press down drive info 2 it says we have 11 miles left on the tank not a whole lot uh, and you can see those green uh, indicators on the right that say parking assist, uh, blind spot monitor, as well as rear cross traffic alert system. Um, so we're gonna, we're gonna go back into the driving. Okay, so let's you know how, how well you're in eco mode. Temperature, G-forces, gear position, sway warning. So if you're like constantly swerving in our traffic, you know, or the lines on the road, the car is gonna let you know that you need to take a break. Um, Tire pressure. I'm guessing the car needs to be on to be able to uh, get that tire pressure reading. Um, and that's about it. So we're gonna go over where you have a compass. We have uh, your your audio selection. Oh, this is your uh, radar cruise control as well as your. Um, so I'm gonna turn that on. It's down here at the bottom. I was trying to find it where where it was on there. But the radar's cruise control is also on. Um, but that's about it, guys, for the center screen. It looks pretty cool. Let's see what happens when we change the driving modes. Okay, there's sport mode. There's sport plus. Now, as you can see, the rev, rev limiter is really, really low. And I think it does that <clears throat> until the engine's warmed up. Um, so once the engine's warmed up, it will creep to its natural. It's probably around 6,000 RPM for the red line on this car. Uh, but as you can see, it's like, okay, we're not gonna even let you rev it until the engine's warm. Um, but I'm just gonna press it in for normal mode. And then there's comfort. It's gonna make the suspension pretty soft. 
Um, and then there's eco mode. Okay, Sport S, Sport Plus, back to normal. Uh, it's a great looking system, it's simple, and it gives you all the information that you need. So if you look over here, and we'll just skip around, this is kind of similar to the LS500. Uh, um, it looks far superior in this vehicle, because in the LS500 it almost looks like they were gonna put a screen there, but they decided not to. Here, it's very subtle, and it just looks really, really good. Um, it's just like a nice diamond-plated design. Actually, it might be the same L design that you find in the, the, the light assembly. You have the clock over here. This is gonna have, uh, I believe, a 10-inch screen in here. Not quite the 12-inch you find in some of our bigger vehicles. So, um, this kind of reminds me of the rear taillight, guys. It looks really sharp and it kind of fits with the theme of the exterior of the car. You can see how slim the CD player is. They're trying to get away from it and it does have the Mark Levinson in here. Guys, if you haven't heard of Mark Levinson system, go to your nearest Lexus dealership, ask for a test drive with a Mark Levinson and your mind will be blown. It feels like it has two 12 inch subs in it. Um, and there's no distortion when it gets loud. Back to the steering wheel, so, uh, radar cruise control, lane departure alert and assist. Where you control the, um, and this the is cruise control. The Previously, your cruise control fobs and all Toyota and Lexus were here, no more. Of course, you have your big elephant ear uh, paddle shifters, which feel really good, they feel great. So this almost looks like where the driving mode would be on an old Lexus, but this is how you play with the radio, um, because you can see there's very little uh, options up here for buttons and switches so that's all down here now um, and you can track now this is kind of funny I believe this is the same little switch they use on the NX for uh, their climate control so they're just reusing some of the switches um, this one seems new because it doesn't have this little notch at the top this this wheel might be new and specific to this car um, your map button menu back and then this is a touchpad which I like quite a bit it reminds me of a laptop um, and then here, how do you select the drive? Okay, well you just press this to park, and then here's the gate for driving. You push it to the left and down for drive. Push it to the left and up for reverse. It's pretty simple. There's a brake hold function. Over here, so this is pretty neat. Um, I don't know why they have so many vents, but the vents, the styling of the vents in this car, pretty neat. So this one looks pretty standard. It's kind of uh, slotted down. If we just look, this since this has the Mark Levinson, uh, it's gonna it has the speakers all the way across uh, the dash here. Um, we have this nice clock here, and again, it has the L's in the back that match the L's in the head headlight assembly, so it looks really, really sharp. Uh, again, we have this nice stitching. Now, this is the black interior. If we just look at the design of the seat, uh, it's fantastic. It's simple. It's clean. And these seats are very supportive and extraordinarily comfortable. This is my least favorite design uh, choice for the interior of the LC500, but it's still better than just about anything else out there. Uh, this car just feel, fits me like a glove. So the passenger has some really interesting options here to secure themselves. Okay, there's no oh crap bar up there, but you have you can dual wield these handles. So right hand would go here, left hand would go here. Uh, I don't know why, but I guess it's kind of cool. It's just it's a cool feature, and even the handles are are um, inserted with this nice aluminum finish in the middle. But back to the vents, guys. I'm getting a little distracted. The vents here. Um, they're slotted, just barely slotted in there. And then you have a normal one up there. I don't know why you have both, but I guess you can never have too many vents, right? Um, so we're gonna press this button here and that's gonna open up the glove box. And there's a hole here. I haven't noticed that before. Um, and oh, that's, that's to lock it. I think there's a key slot in there to lock it. Uh, but if we look in here, it's pretty dark, but you can see some pamphlets are back there. It's actually really deep. That swallows like a third of my arm, but it's single pocket. There's not a double pocket. So it's really deep, fairly big. Uh, if we look at the, the door here, uh, we have of course a light down here. And then down here is gonna be, if you had like, you know, you could put a drink sideways in there. It's not tall enough to put it vertically, you put it sideways. Um, you can put some other stuff in there as well. Um, but if you just look at this design, this reminds me of the LS500. You can see, I can like kind of put my fingers back here and they kind of escape behind this nice 
uh, I don't know. I don't even know what you would call it, but this nice wall of leather on the door. Um, and then you can see the control functions are just kind of slotted behind this nice, uh, maybe the word I'm looking for is buttress, buttress of Windsor. Guys, let me know if that's the right word, a flying buttress for that thing. For some reason that came to my head. So we're gonna press this down and this slides back and slides open. And so it slides back and it looks like this would be your cup holder up here. It's kind of square with this weird, you can see it's a different sized and this is like a rubber piece, but this side is bigger than this side. And I guess it would, you could fit maybe a phone here and a, a cup here. And then of course, guys, I forgot, your main cup holder is up here and it is adjustable. So you can press that in. Um, but we're gonna open this up and look to see what goodies we have in here. We have a auxiliary, a USB, and a 12 volt, pretty standard. And this is shallow, guys. There's not a, a lot of room in here. Here, you have so much space. You could just lounge in this thing, almost lay completely back, and it's very comfortable. So we're gonna look up here. Uh, we have our one-touch LED, um, touch-sensitive lights. There's no switch or anything. Um, and then this is gonna control the sunroof, which I'm not gonna play with since I don't have the keys. Okay, this is at least illuminated. It's a nice soft light, it is not adjustable, but it's there. Um, and then, I think we're gonna go ahead and guys and get in, in the back seat here. Here is the controls for the seats. Now, it kinda looks like black plastic, but it's it's like an aluminum finish. And you can see it's, it's a pretty standard Lexus affair when it comes to that. This, the <clears throat> lever to open up the back seat, or open up the front seat is here to get into the back, and it is, automatic so it's not like sliding on a track just floating around it it's motorized so let's get it back here and we're gonna play around so this is a mark levinson system you can see there's this huge speaker here that takes up the middle and you have this nice leather stitch rump here um it's like a nice armrest it's super soft super duper soft it's not not the same consistency of the seat um you can see the nice speaker here on the right hand side um, this is more of that Alcantara material as well as up here. Now my head, guys, my head, I'm, I'm gonna lounge quite a bit because my head is like smashed up against the roof here. So I'm just, I'm lounging hardcore. This would not be possible if the seat was back in a driving position. Um, but you know, I don't want to mess up my hairdo for the day, you know what I'm saying? So back here, guys, here's the child, child seat. Now, there's no way you could fit a child seat or a rear-facing child seat back here. There's no way. But you could probably fit a forward-facing child seat. Um, just because there's so much room, this bows out pretty hard. And you can see this huge lip over here that extends the seat. Um, and of course, in Lexus fashion, it's beautifully stitched. We're just gonna push that forward. And again, this side one is motorized as well, but you can just see the detail, guys. Look at the detail. It looks like the, sh the seat has like shoulders. Pretty nuts. Um, and then it's zipped. You can see it's zipped all the way up. Um, I don't I don't know why. I guess you could change. Maybe you could change, or maybe that's how you access the motors of the seat. I don't know, but it's zipped. Uh, let's push the arm armrest here forward. Um, but that's about it, guys. You can see this interesting design here, this little cutout. And this is hard plastic here, so that's kind of weird. Um, and then you have hooks here that tuck away, one touch, they tuck away. Um, but the back is actually really comfortable, but it's not gonna be comfortable. Here, we'll do it, we'll do it guys, what the heck. We'll do it anyways. Okay, so my neck is, so you can see, oh gosh, okay, I'm getting, okay. I got a little scared. Okay, so it stopped, it stopped. You can see my knee here, it's almost outside the car. Um, but I'm sure you could close the door and I'd be okay. And you see this, but my head, guys, I don't know if you can see my head in the mirror. Can you? I'm like completely to the right with my head. It's, I'm just smashed. Um, so if you're maybe five, eight and shorter, you could probably fit back here without your head running into the ceiling. And your legs would probably fit a little bit better between, uh, the chair and the rear seat. But I'm a little claustrophobic and I'm going to get out of here. 
But that wraps it up for the 2018 LC500. One of the best cars on the road in terms of looks, style, and luxury. Um, it's, it, it looks like a spaceship. So if you like spaceships and you like cutting edge design and copious amounts of power and sophistication, look no further.